On day one, I spawned into the stony peaks as an awesome elemental spider! Ten hearts. That isn't too bad. Still, I could probably afford to be a lot stronger. I started to crawl around on my eight elemental legs. It was in the middle of the night, with the moon shining up above. I couldn't help but feel like something spooky was about to happen. And then, in the cold of the moonlight, a huge scary werewolf jumped out. Ah, ooh. Hello there, little one. You look lost. Come with me. I can help you find your way. My, my, Mr. Werewolf. What big teeth you have. Yes, little spider. All the better to eat you with. He came charging towards me, and in a panic, I used one of my inherent spider powers, putting down as many cobwebs as I could. Lucky for me, the web slowed the werewolf down, buying me some time. Ah, that's a dirty trick. Come back here. No way. I ran away as fast as I could, crawling through the stony peaks and trying to escape. But during my daring escape, I was ambushed by some vicious worgens. Not so fast, Spida. We want to play. But I didn't want to play, so I did all I could to escape and find a place to hide for the night. I waited for hours for morning to come, but it never did. The night just went on and on. Something's really wrong here. On day two, or at least after time for a whole day had passed, I noticed that the eternal night had continued and a big bright moon still hung up in the sky. This is so weird. Why isn't it ever daytime around here? It just doesn't make sense. But I couldn't afford to sit around and hide. My elemental spider stomach was grumbling. I started skittering around and searching for something to eat until I happened upon an apple tree full of rich, juicy apples. Ooh, don't mind if I do. I climbed the tree to get the apples, ate them, and then gathered some wood to make a wooden pickaxe. I mined some stone with it and used that stone to make a stone pickaxe and stone sword. If I'm going to be trapped in a nightmarish eternal night, I might as well at least have a roof over my head. I mined enough stone from the stony peaks to start building myself a basic little spider nest. One room, a bed, and a few lanterns to offset the scary darkness. Yet ever so spooky, there's no place like home. And while I was admiring my work, I got interrupted by another worgen running in to attack me. Mmm, tasty spider. I'll eat you alive. Eat this instead. I lashed out with my sword, striking brave and true until the worgen was defeated. In that moment, I knew that I could stand up for myself. On day three, I left my base in the stony peaks to hang around the sunflower plains. It was still in the middle of the deep, dark night. Maybe I can find some interesting materials for my gear or my base around here. Instead, I felt a sudden cold gust of air blowing across the plains. A terrifying presence had entered the space. I looked up and saw a big, frightening Solnir galloping towards me. You should not be here, little spider. This is a dark and terrible place. If you're not careful, you could get hurt. I knew he wasn't warning me, he was threatening me, and he looked way too tough for me to take him on, so all I could do was run. I fled across the plains as fast as I could, with the Solnir hot on my heels. He was catching up to me. All I could do was use my special move, dropping more cobwebs to slow him down. You can't keep running forever, Zozo. I'll get you eventually. I was able to get out of there while the Solnir was trapped. I felt bad about running away. I need to stick to my guns and stand up for myself, or I'm never gonna solve this problem. Out of my way, fool. I looked down and saw a strange little creature standing at my feet. Who are you? Who am I? I'm the Onion Queen, you knave, and you will bow before me. My castle was destroyed in a worgen attack, and now I need to seek out a new castle. Well, your highness, why not come and stay at my base? I'd appreciate the company. This is agreeable, but only if my room is extremely elegant. From day four to day five, I returned to my base in the Stony Peaks with her highness, the Onion Queen. This place is a horrible dump, Zozo. Not at all befitting of my regal nature, but it will have to do. Thanks for compromising for me, your highness. I guess. I set to work mining more stone until soon I'd excavated enough to make a new room where the Onion Queen could stay. I did my best to make it an elegant royal suite, but my resources were pretty limited at this stage. Hmm, I won't lie to you, Zozo. It's utterly hideous, but it will have to do. Thank you for the effort you put in.
I left the base again to mine some more stone, but while I was out there, I was attacked by another gang of worgens. You guys just won't give up, will you? It's nighttime all the time out here. Don't kill worgens ever sleep? They didn't reply. Instead, they ran in and attacked me, and I fought them back with my stone sword. When I'd finally defeated the nasty little gang, I noticed that one of them had dropped an interesting piece of loot. Wait, is that a battle axe? Don't they freeze any mobs I hit for 10 seconds? That'd be super useful later. From day six to day eight, I was back in the stony peaks looking for a decent mining cavern where I could upgrade all my weapons and tools. Some iron would change everything, but it's so hard to hunt some down when it's so dark all the time. Can't find your iron, eh? How about I help you out with an iron fist? I turned with terror and saw the giant werewolf standing right in front of me. He somehow looked even bigger and scarier now. You nasty little trickster. I bet you thought you were real smart using that trick with the spider webs. But with these new weapons, I won't even need to run to get you. That's when I noticed that the werewolf was carrying a stack of javelins. If he was good with them, I was in real trouble. Let's just talk, wolf to spider. I want some answers, werewolf. Can't you tell me why it's so dark all the time? You do this? I don't owe you any answers. All I owe you is a javelin to the face. Get running, Spider-Man. I started running away as the werewolf chased, throwing his javelins at me as I tried to flee. I managed to dodge most of them, but when one of them hit me, I lost most of my hearts. Oh no, oh no, 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 no! I knew if I took another javelin, I'd be doomed. I needed to make a plan, quickly. Wait, I've got it! I used my cobweb power again, building a wall of them. It wouldn't keep him back for long, but it might at least block some of his javelins. I've never been happier to be a web slinger. With the little time that bought me, I'd managed to escape the wrath of the werewolf yet again. From day nine to day 10, I was resting in my base, still recovering from that stressful attack by the werewolf. Boy, when the sun doesn't come out, it feels like there's no motivation to get up and get going. But I didn't just get to laze around all day. Instead, the Onion Queen suddenly burst into my room. Zozo, get up this instant. Your queen demands it. You're never going to get anything done if you can't even get out of bed. Sorry, sorry, your majesty. I didn't mean to upset you. I've taken the liberty of improving your base to make it live up to my own royal standards. Go check outside. I've begun work on constructing a great statue to inspire you into action for my honor. I went outside and saw that the Onion Queen had been true to her word. She'd started building an amazing statue for me, but I couldn't tell what it was just yet. What about you? What do you guys think? Do you know what the Onion Queen statue is going to be? Let me know down in the comments. The Onion Queen wasn't done. She'd also made several other base upgrades. A training room where I could work hard and get stronger, and even a furnace to smelt metal ores and diamonds with a storage room where we could keep all of our supplies. You've outdone yourself with all this, your majesty. What can I say? I've always had a knack for architecture. It runs in the royal bloodline. From day 11 to day 12, I was lying in bed in a state of uneasy sleep. The fact that night and day were no longer different made it really difficult to decide when I should go to bed. While I was sleeping, I dreamed of daylight on the stony peaks. I dreamed of the bright sun up in the air. And strangely, I dreamed of a lone villager walking through the peaks. The villager wasn't strong, and nobody took him seriously. What most people didn't know was that he had a powerful secret. Every full moon, he'd turn into a powerful werewolf. A werewolf that everyone fears and respects. But the problem was that the villager could only access this power under the full moon. He wanted to be a werewolf all the time, so he sought out an ancient and powerful spellbook. With the spellbook, he ushered in an eternal night and an eternal full moon. That way, he could always be the werewolf and always be the most powerful person out there. I woke up in a cold, elemental spider sweat. I knew everything now, and I knew that if I wanted the sun to rise again, I needed to defeat the werewolf once and for all. From day 13 to day 15, now knowing what I needed to do, I realized that I needed to get stronger if I wanted to defeat the werewolf and return sunlight to the overworld. If I'm going to be strong, I need to not be afraid. I need to take on even the most challenging enemies. That's why I returned to the Sunflower Plains that the sun hadn't touched in a long, long time to take on the Solnir. So, you return to me, little spider. Are you ready to leave this cold, dark world? No, Solnir. I'm just getting started. Come at me. And he did. 
the Solnir galloped in, but he didn't know that I had my battle axe ready. With one strike, he was frozen in place, and I pulled out my stone sword to finish him off. With the Solnir destroyed, I had enough XP to level up and get stronger. I had 30 hearts and my first elemental power, Ice Blast. This is awesome. This new power will catch that evil werewolf by surprise. From day 16 to day 19, with my new power and confidence, I knew that I needed to get myself some new equipment too. After all that searching around the stony peaks, I finally found a mining cavern that looked like it might have a rich vein of iron inside. Time to get mining. I descended into the mining cavern until I found the iron I was looking for. After hacking through the blocks with my stone pickaxe, I collected up the iron ore and started to leave. But on the way out, I was cornered by a big, scary hellhound. Ah, uh, nice doggy. Lucky for me, I had my new power. I blasted the hellhound with my ice blast, freezing it in place. I didn't want to hurt him, so I just snuck out as quickly as I could while he was still frozen. Not long after, I made it back to my base, where I used the furnace that the Onion Queen built me to smelt the iron into ingots and made myself some new tools, an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. Nothing's gonna stop me now. From day 20 to day 22, I got another rude awakening from the Onion Queen. Okay, okay, I'll get up. Just give me five more minutes, your majesty. No time, Zozo. That ghastly werewolf. He's here at the future Onion Queen Palace. What? Oh no! With no time to waste, I skittered out of my room on my eight elemental legs and met the terrifying werewolf standing right there. You, little spider, are one of the biggest cowards I've ever met. Every time we battle, you use your little cobwebs to escape. So now, I've come to you. No way out. Are you ready to meet your doom, spider boy? My name is Zozo, and this time, I'm ready to take you on, one on one. The battle began, using my iron sword and my battle axe against him. He was incredibly strong and equally fast, but I didn't give up. And when I hit him with an ice blast, he stopped dead. What is this magic? You couldn't do that before. Because I'm getting stronger, werewolf. And soon, I'll be so strong that you can't defeat me. Don't count your elemental spider eggs before they hatch, Zozo. I will return. With that, the werewolf ran off into the eternal night. And for the first time, I truly believed that I could defeat him once and for all. From day 23 to day 26, I was, once again, woken up after my intense battle by the Onion Queen. How many times, Zozo? Ah, sorry, fighting the werewolf was tiring work. Well, you won't last very long as my royal protectorate if you get hit by one of his javelins, will you? Here, while you were sleeping, I made these. The Onion Queen handed me a pair of Outback leggings. He should make you more agile and allow you to dodge out of the path of oncoming projectiles. Plus, you need a uniform if you're going to represent my royal name out there. Huh, these are a pretty good fit. Not sure they're my color, though. You'd better wear them, Zozo. As royalty, I have demanded it. And that means what I say is now law. Any more laws you want to decree, your highness? Yes, actually. I hereby declare that everyone should search Z-O-Z-O -Z -O to find more videos to watch. I had no idea what any of that meant, but it sounded important, so I'd do it if I were you. From day 27 to day 31, the Onion Queen seemed pretty agitated about something, and not wanting to get on her bad side, I figured I should ask her. Everything going okay, your highness? No, not at all. Everything is positively horrid. Positively? Isn't that good? No! Look at, just look at my statue! I took a look, and the Onion Queen had really been making a lot of progress with building her new monument. It looks okay to me. Uh, of course you'd think that. To the untrained eye, maybe. But there's no white concrete. How can I possibly have a statue celebrating my regality without any white concrete? Uh, okay. Well, what if I go and find some white concrete that you can use to add to the statue? Well, it's about time you made yourself useful. Off you go. There should be some in the Twilight Valley. So, off I went to search the Twilight Valley. It didn't take me long to find some white concrete, which made me wonder what all the fuss was about. Then, I noticed a gang of worgens in my way. That explains that, I guess. I leapt into action and delivered a few battle axe attacks to freeze the worgens in place, then shattered them to frozen pieces with my sword. With all of them defeated, I was able to retrieve plenty of white concrete and returned it to the Onion Queen to add to her vanity project. I mean, statue. 
This will do for now, but you'd better head back to the Twilight Valley to get more! Your queen demands it! From day 32 to day 35, I did as the Onion Queen asked me, or rather, told me, and went off to find more white concrete in the Twilight Valley. I didn't come across much more though, just a few extra wargans to take out for the XP. Suddenly, I heard a call for help from nearby. Hey, excuse me, I could use some help here if it's no trouble, that is. Sure thing, at least you're polite about it. I'm Zozo, what do you need? Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I'm little Kato, and well, my friend hasn't come back for a while. I'm worried he might have been kidnapped. That's awful. Don't worry, Kato. I'll do my best to track him down. You just point me towards where you last saw him. From day 36 to day 39, I followed little Kato's directions until I came across a mini base hidden in the Twilight Valley and made my way through the main entrance without any problems. Sure enough, there was Kato's friend being held inside a cage, although I hadn't expected him to be a tomato. Um, excuse me, are you Kato's friend? Oh my, thank heavens! Did she send you? She did, although she didn't mention you were- Oh, I know! Imagine putting someone in a cage, it's barbaric! I'm rolling the rogue tomato. I'd ask your name, but we'll have to dispense with the pleasantries until you've got me out of here. Quickly, before he gets back, he's been threatening to chop me up and put me in a salad. It's ghastly. Sure, I'll get on it. Who captured you anyway? That'd be me. What do you think you're doing with my lunch? I turned around to find myself face to face with a terrifying Reaver. He seemed pretty mad to find me trying to rescue Roland, so I acted fast. I used my webs to create a defensive barrier around the rogue tomato's cage, then got ready to fend off the deadly Reaver. From day 40 to day 43, I battled with the Reaver. It was way bigger than me and a tough opponent, but I had to do my best to save Roland and reunite him with Kato. The Reaver was vicious, but also found it hard to move inside the cramped space of the mini base. So I used that to my advantage. I webbed him to the spot. Then, as he was struggling to free himself, I used a well-timed ice blast to freeze him solid. With him trapped, I went in for the killing blow with my sword and defeated the Reaver. Yeah, I did it. What a show. Good hustle there, mystery rescuer. Now, if you're not too tired, mind getting back to freeing me from this cage? Okay, okay, here you go. And just like that, Roland the Rogue Tomato was saved. Since it was still a dark and endless night outside, I figured the right thing to do was guide him back to where Kato was, just in case any other nasty mobs decided they fancied a tomato for a snack. Thank you, Zozo. I dread to think what would have happened if you didn't come along. No problem. You know, I take back what I said before. You guys are actually quite the pair of friends. Here, Kato. Why don't we give this charming elemental spider the rest of our white concrete? It's the least we can do to say thank you. From day 44 to day 49, I left little Kato and Roland the Rogue Tomato to go off together and headed back from the Twilight Valley to my base back in the Stony Peaks. It had been a hard few days. At least it felt that way. Thanks to no daytime or nighttime, it was hard to tell exactly how long it had been. Although, it seemed to be long enough for the Onion Queen to have more complaints. There you are! You've been off gallivanting for ages! You really expect me to finish the work on this statue by myself? It's manual labor, unbecoming of royalty! Don't you know it's illegal for me to work, since I'm the queen? Is it illegal, or is it just illegal because you said it is? Don't speak like that to me! That's almost treasonous! Did you at least find some more white concrete? Oh, well, I kinda got sidetracked, but I did manage to get some. Well, good. Here, you can use that and the rest of mine to carry on working on the statue. I'm going to go lie down. Remember to make it look stoic, but also down to earth, like me. I decided I'd work on the statue later. In the meantime, I went about building a perimeter wall to give my base some added defenses. I got the idea after seeing that Reaver's mini base. Plus, it'd come in handy in case the werewolf came back while I wasn't around. I thought I told you to finish the statue. That was a really quick nap, your highness. I can't sleep for too long. I don't want to look like a disheveled commoner. Uh, anyway, while you've been so preoccupied with less important things, I took it upon myself to work more on my resplendent statue. Well, that's really something. I just hope no mobs spot it from a distance and decide to come pay us a visit. Well, that's for you to handle. I'm queen. I shouldn't have to fight. From day 50 to day 53, I was recuperating at my base when suddenly a javelin came flying towards me. Thanks to my outback leggings, I was able to hop right out of the way without injury as it hurtled past and missed me. 
It was the werewolf who had thrown it. He had come back to the base, this time with an army of his vile worgens. Did you think I was done with you? Oh no, now here comes the wolf to flush the spider out. Worgens, attack! The worgens charged at the base, clambering their way over the perimeter wall. They launched a few ice blasts from inside, trying to freeze them as they got closer. The werewolf stormed the base and kidnapped the Onion Queen. I was still fighting off the worgens inside the base when the werewolf escaped with the Onion Queen. The one upside was I was fighting his minions off a lot easier now and cut through enough of them to level up. I now had a whopping 50 hearts. And even better, watching the worgens invade my base had helped teach me a new elemental spider ability. Now I could climb walls. From day 54 to day 57, I decided to work on repairing the base and fixing some of the damage left behind by those pesky worgens. Even I had to admit, the place felt too quiet without the Onion Queen. Sure, she was pretty bossy, but I suppose she couldn't help it. She was used to having servants and people to do whatever she wanted all the time. I knew that that werewolf wouldn't harm her until he got me, so I still had time to mount a rescue. With the repairs all done, I decided to head back to the Twilight Valley and reach out to my other friends. Little Kato was happy to see me. Oh, I'm real sorry about what happened at your base, Sozo. Thanks, Kato. I don't suppose you saw what direction the werewolf took the Onion Queen in? I would have gone back to the Zelkova Forest. That's where the werewolf's lair is. But you really don't look like you're ready to take on that nasty wolf just yet. What do you think I should do next then? Maybe go and uh, make yourself some new equipment first. I mean, only if you want to. I know there's a cave near here with lots of shiny stones in it. Maybe start there. Shiny stones? You mean diamonds? Now that sounds like a good idea. Thanks, Kato. From day 58 to day 62, I took little Kato's advice and headed off to mine for some diamonds. My trusty iron sword and pickaxe had served me well up until now. But if I was going to stand a chance at defeating the werewolf and restoring daylight and save the Onion Queen on top of that, then I'd need some much stronger gear. Venturing deeper into the mining cavern, I quickly spotted the glint of some shiny diamonds and wasted no time prying them out of the cave stone walls. Just as I gathered up my newfound diamonds, it seemed that something was stirring underground. A dangerous high reaver appeared and I climbed up a nearby wall just in time to dodge his attack. I leapt down from my vantage point and gave my old iron sword one last use to take down the High Reaver. Once that was done, I used my newly mined diamonds to make myself some shiny new gear. I had enough to forge a diamond sword and a matching pickaxe to make fighting and gathering resources much easier. I was a step closer to restoring daylight in the overworld. From day 63 to day 66, I made my way back to my base. Even though I had come a long way, I was still feeling uncertain. I knew that if what Kato had said was true, then I was still underprepared to face the werewolf again. In the endless nighttime he had created, he would be far more powerful, and it seemed no amount of new diamond weapons could change that. But as I returned home, I was greeted by the sight of the Onion Queen statue. It stood, unfinished, and part of me thought it would be right to finish it. But I changed my mind. No, she should be here to see it completed. Although she bossed me around, we were still friends, and I had to get her back. After all, I was meant to be her protector, right? So I readied myself for the next part of my quest, to find the werewolf's den, defeat him, save the Onion Queen, and finally bring an end to the night. And if you want to help me get there, then why don't you subscribe by clicking the button below. And make sure to leave a like on the video and comment to show your support. From day 67 to day 70, I headed towards the creepy Zelkova Forest. If Kato was right, this was where I'd find the werewolf's hideout. My plan was to do what I had done when I went to rescue Roland, find some way to get inside and find where my friend the Onion Queen was being held. Then, if I could manage it, I would break her out and get her back to safety and worry about settling the score with the werewolf later. As I approached the fortress, a pretty nasty welcome party was patrolling the area nearby. Worgens! I blasted three with an ice blast, holding them in place while my new diamond sword took down the others in one hit each. Then, before the frozen worgens had a chance to defrost, I slashed the blade their way and shattered them. I figured out quickly that there must have been so many of them here guarding away into the werewolf's den. And sure enough, after I looked around, I found a button that opened up the entrance into a tunnel. This was my way in. From day 71 to day 74, I traveled through the long, dark hallway into the fortress. In fact, since there was torches on the wall, the dark down here wasn't so bad. It was actually easier to see my way around than outside in the endless night. 
I made my way into the werewolf's face and began searching around. I managed to stay hidden in the werewolf's den, mainly by climbing up the walls and avoiding the eyeline of the wargans that were patrolling the fortress's corridors. However, in the first room I searched, I stumbled across a Solnir. How did you get in, intruder? I came in through dirt tunnel. <laughs> Just for that joke, I'm trampling you myself instead of bringing you to the werewolf. <laughs> Good luck doing that. Well, web to the floor. I used my webs and stuck them to the spot, then climbed up the wall, putting all my elemental spider skills on display. I leapt down, sword at the ready, and swiped at the Solnir. Like that, he was down. But then I realized what he was guarding in this room. In the far corner was an old chest, and once I pried it open, I found something that would give me even more of an edge. It was a full set of diamond armor. I quickly put it on to protect myself from oncoming damage. From day 75 to day 78, I continued to look around for the Onion Queen. After searching high and low, I eventually found where the Onion Queen was being held. So, so, I never thought I'd see you again. Please get me out of here! Compared to this awful cage, your base is a palace! It's okay, your highness. That's why I came here. You mean, even after I've been so rude to you, you still came to rescue me? Sure. That's what friends do. Friends? What are those? Is that another word for uh, servants? I'll explain later. <laughs> With a few swings of my sword, I broke the cage wide open and the Onion Queen was free! She ran off, and before I could join her, a certain sinister someone jumped out in front of me. Not so fast. You thought it would be that easy? I knew you'd come and get the queen. In fact, I was counting on it. Now you've saved me the trouble of bringing you here myself. The werewolf! It was a trap! I leapt into battle and swiped at him with my sword, catching him by surprise with a flurry of attacks. He was still too tough for me to fully defeat, but I had to try. With a few more well-timed hits, I was able to weaken the wolf enough for me to flee and head back out through the tunnel to safety. From day 79 to day 84, although I was heading back to base, the werewolf wasn't taking our escape well. Ugh, that pesky elemental spider thinks he can scuttle into my home and steal from my larder, not on my watch. The werewolf went to find the book of spells he owned, the same one he had used as a villager to stop the sun from rising and keep the overworld trapped in endless nighttime. Aha, uh -huh. here's the incantation. He began casting another magic spell. Outside in the sky, the glow of the moonlight got brighter. He grew into an even bigger, scarier werewolf than he was before. Yes. Yes! With more moonlight, my strength will increase! And there won't be anything that Zozo can do to stop me! No elemental spider can stop the power of the moon! From day 85 to day 89, I finally made it back to the stony peaks in one piece with the Onion Queen behind me. I think I've nearly got it. So friends are other people who you... Um, what do you do with them again? You can talk to them, hang out and share interests. If you're in trouble and can't get yourself out, then you can call on a friend to help. Some friends even give each other gifts. Are we friends, Zozo? Sure, I mean, as long as you want to be. I would like that. Here, have this. I was taught this spell when I took the throne, but I have no way to harness it. I'm not attuned with the elements, but you're an elemental spider. The Onion Queen cast her magic my way and gave me a new upgrade, a fire aspect enchantment. Just give me a moment, Zozo. I should go and do something. After a little while, I figured out that the Onion Queen had wanted to finish her statue. And pretty soon, she told me it was finished. But what I hadn't been expecting was for her to make it into a giant spider web. I felt really appreciated. There's something you should know. When I was captured, the werewolf spoke of a book of spells he has and how he can increase his power with the moonlight. If you get that book, you might be able to bring daylight back. But with the moon this bright, you need to be stronger. Well, I've been trying my best. Maybe since he's using magic, then I should use some of my own to stop him. I agree. I think it's time for me to stop clinging to my royal title and do something that can actually change things for the better. I'm going to help you. From day 90 to day 94, I set out toward the old mini base in the Twilight Valley. The Onion Queen had sent me there to see if there was any magical supplies we could steal from the werewolf's minions. I ran into another group of wargans, and they went down after a short fight. 
I was really getting good at this, and with my new fire aspect enchantment, it was easier than ever to take these nasty critters down. Their boss would be another story, though. I searched around the mini base and found another chest. Perfect, I wonder what's inside. I opened it up and was delighted to find a potion of power. This would be perfect to give me a boost of strength to help me take down the werewolf. I'd still need some more help in order to beat him. And that's when I remembered what I taught the Onion Queen. From day 95 to day 97, I went back to my base, and to my luck, the exact person I was hoping to see was right there waiting for me. Zozo, you're back. Hey there, Kato. How's Roland doing? He's fine. Well, not exactly. He got it in his head that the werewolf wants to eat him. Well, let's see what we can do about stopping that from happening. I actually came here to give you a gift. It's not much, but I wanted to say thank you for saving my rogue tomato friend and trying your best against the werewolf. Oh, you didn't have to get me a gift. Actually, where is it? Oh, it's in my brain. I'm going to show you how to make netherite armor. It'll be strong enough that the werewolf will never bite through. So for the next few days, Kato and I worked on building my new armor. And sure enough, by the time we were done, I had the toughest, most pristine full set of netherite armor anyone had ever seen. On day 98, I was preparing myself for the final battle. This was it. After nearly a full 100 days of night, I was getting ready to face off against the werewolf for the third and final time. I had my potion of power ready to drink, and I was decked out in my sweet new netherite armor. There was only one thing left to do. Search for more videos by typing ZOZO -Z and leave me a comment telling us what you want to see us survive 100 days in Minecraft next. Okay, two things left to do. I said farewell to my friends, leaving the Onion Queen and little Kato in the safety of my base as I set off to complete my quest. On day 99, I decided not to take the secret tunnel into the werewolf's den. I had gone that way last time, and no doubt he'd have that entrance guarded this time around. So instead, I snuck up to the outer walls and used my elemental spider ability of crawling to climb up the wall and find a way in through the top. Once I was inside, I decided it was time to get ready for the fight. I already had on my netherite armor for protection and my diamond sword to do some damage. But the werewolf had the power of being a wolf and the moon on his side. So I drank my potion of power and leveled up. The potion made me even stronger. I now had 100 hearts and the power to fire energy blasts. Now this would be a fair fight. And not a moment too soon because the werewolf came barreling down the halls of his fortress towards me. I could smell you a mile off. You've been a thorn in my side for too long, Zozo. Now it's time to squash this itsy bitsy elemental spider. We clashed and I used my sword to block the swings of his claws. He was ferocious, far more than he had been before. He might have spent too much time in the, well, the moon. Wait, is moonstroke a thing? You can get sunstroke if you're out in the sun for too long, so maybe? Do you ever stop talking? While the werewolf was agitated and distracted, I surprised him with a sudden energy blast. It sent him staggering backwards. I ran at him with my diamond sword drawn. We clashed swords again. He really was stronger, but so was I. I ducked out of the path of his claws and used all my tricks against him. I froze him to the spot and swung my sword before he quickly broke free from the ice. I leapt out of the path of his javelins and climbed up the walls to get out of his reach when I needed a second to collect my thoughts. And then, leaping from above, I brought my sword swinging down through the air. Boom! I had done it! I defeated the werewolf! On day 100, I gathered up the spellbook from the werewolf's lair and made my way back to the base with a spring in my step. Both little Kato and the Onion Queen cheered when they saw me making it back in one piece. You did it, Zozo. I never doubted you for a second. Thanks, Kato. I think you might know what to do with this spell book. No, the honor is all yours, Zozo. I'll be happy to once again feel the sunlight with friends by my side. I flipped through the pages and found the right spell. And once I recited the magic words, the sky was filled with bright sunlight. Daytime had been restored and the overworld was back to normal. All thanks to your friendly neighborhood, Elemental Spider.